Hello everyone, my name is Saurabh Agrawal and I'm part of the product management team at Informatica and today we are going to talk about task flows. Uh, as you might already know that Informatica had the task flow functionality uh, in the prior releases uh, but the task flow functionality was sequential orchestration wherein you can um, execute your data integration task sequentially. Uh, but if you look at the industry use cases, this is not enough because industry use cases are much more complicated they need uh, better performance, uh, they, they expect parallel path execution for that matter. They need uh, certain coding paradigms like uh, decision making. They also need uh, some specific uh, paradigms like jump, uh, which is more like a go-to statement in coding. So all these things are missing in uh, task flows and uh, with uh, advanced task flow, which is coming up in December 2017 release, uh, Informatica will be able to uh, support all of these coding paradigms. So let's get started. Uh, so what I'm going to do today is I'm going to talk about one of the specific use cases uh, and the use case I'm going to talk about is about whatever housing. A pretty common use case, uh, so let me give you a gist of that first. Uh, in a typical data warehousing scenario, you choose to have a star schema or a snowflake schema which is centered around a couple of premises. The first thing is that there are dimensions table which are very geospecific and they uh, only uh, look at uh, one or more uh, dimensions wherein uh, you know you may look at the product you may look at the sales and then you need to have a facts table which derives information from multiple of these dimension tables and then you get a you know a much more comprehensive result like you know sales for products right so you can slice and dice the information from the facts table uh, but the premise remains that the dimensions table seems to provide the base for you to proceed and start working with the facts table and that's exactly the use case I'm going to talk to you about uh, in this presentation. So let's get started. Uh, so here is the task flow which is going to solve our purpose. Uh, like I mentioned to that we are using dimensions table here. So uh, I'm going to be using um, my local MySQL instance. So first let me show you the tables that I have. So I have a dimension customer table which talks about how many customers we have. So that has five rows then we have dimension products. Then we have a salesperson, and then we have storage dimension. And as you can see, we also have fact pro sales, which is derived from all of these. So essentially, this fact table has foreign key to all these dimension tables, and that's how the schema works right now. And for the sake of this presentation, I've kept it very simple. So what I have done is I have chosen a mapping task, which is simple pass through in this case. For example, if I were to look at updating the uh, customer dimension, I am just passing the same source data to the uh, dimension data, right? Now the question is, uh, how do I even see this in action when I when I when I run this task flow? And I'm going to talk about that later. But all these tables that you are seeing today, right now, all these tables have an auto increment key. So the first key which I am speaking here, customer ID or the the product key or the dimension salesperson having a salesperson ID all of them are auto increment key. So if you were to run this mapping alone again, uh, we should see you know an equivalent number of rows coming in, but with a different ID and that's gonna be in sequential nature. So, uh, so that's the tables and let me go back to my task flow. Now, given the fact that all these dimension table are, inter are independent of each other, they need not go sequentially and that's where the parallel path paradigm comes into picture. And what it does is, if you choose the parallel path paradigm in the task flow context, it lets you define n number of parallel paths and you can go as many as you want. And in this case, we have four such parallel paths. And each of these parallel paths will execute individually, right? So in a sense, they are providing you uh, property enhancements in terms of parallel execution. And the fact is that each of them will converge at some point and then uh, you have a single thread of execution. So in this case, what we are looking at is we are going to first refresh our dimension table um, and when all of them succeed is when I execute my facts table refresh, right? And how do I do that? All of these uh, executions which are ha uh, happening individually, they are going to have a, a status return, a task status returns as part of execution, uh, which is going to be captured uh, in the task status. So if I were to uh, look at how do I capture that, in my task flow, I have the capability to define a temporary field. Think of it uh, in a very similar fashion, the way we do coding today. So I define a temporary field called total status. 
and this total status is gonna be um, an amalgamation of all the task status written by all these dimension task so uh, what's gonna be is gonna be equivalent to this expression right so if the the first task which is dimension customer task is successful and if the second task is successful if the third task is successful and the fourth task is successful is when I say yes or I say no right so what means is that based upon this result I can make a decision now and that's where decision task comes in the picture and what do we do here is we decide as to what route we should take if we are successful in uh, getting all the tasks executed uh, successfully or we have failed in one of those tasks and if we have successfully executed all of our tasks for dimension update we know that we are all set for doing a facts update as well and that's where we actually uh, call the similar mapping which reads from the fact source and write to the same fact target and uh, that's where this pipeline ends however if we have failed uh, at least in another task for dimension update we don't choose to uh, refresh our facts still because our facts will depend upon one of these tasks and since one of them have failed it is not really appropriate for us to proceed there and that's where we end uh, the execution of it right so this is the overall flow this is a very common use case in data warehouse scenarios and I hope you appreciate uh, that we have all this uh, coding paradigms available for us to leverage now so that you know we can do a much more comprehensive job uh, in terms of orchestration having said that we do have other uh, uh, coding paradigm available in terms of jump uh, in terms of bait uh, which is not really in the scope of this presentation and probably my following uh, presentations on other use cases they may come up so feel free to uh, you know tune to this uh, channel for that now uh, let me run this task flow uh, this task flow is ex using uh, the existing MySQL database on my uh, laptop and when I click on run I am able to go to my jobs to see what is happening uh, with the execution and as you can see uh, every execution by itself is an independent execution it's preceded with an ID which is unique in nature and this console also gives you information as to what is the current state you may choose to even suspend the task flow or even stop it uh, you have the capability to look at what tasks uh, are, are there how many tasks are being there executing and uh, to get a sneak peek into what is happening behind the scenes if you were to go here on the task side you can see that there have been four tasks which execute successfully right and that's when our last task started right so this last task if we recall was dependent upon the first four dimension tasks to get executed first and uh, uh, only when it passes is when uh, we execute the facts table of refresh and this is still running and as you can see it succeeded now so we are done for the task for execution and let me show to you uh, you know uh, if the result is appropriate in terms of what we saw earlier versus now so if I look at my dimension customer table and I just do a refresh on that now I see uh, 10 more rows so I am seeing uh, additional 5 IDs being generated right and if I were same thing for dimension prods I have a similar experience there as well so I'm seeing 5 more rows coming in there uh, again if I were to look at this table I have additional six rows coming in and if I look at this one I have additional three rows coming in and if I look at the fact table I have additional 25 rows coming in now the reason you see uh, the IDs are you know kind of not sequential is because the prior execution did the auto increment earlier so it doesn't really reflect here but uh, you are seeing the additional five rows coming in here which kind of exhibits that the dimension update did happen and we got additional five rows in there with a different ID and uh, so the overall process was successful right uh, I would also want to showcase to you uh, how do you want to debug if certain failures may happen or you want to get a sneak peek into you know what really happened behind the scenes so there's a very good uh, way of looking at uh, you know advanced task flow logging feature so I'm going to take you for the advanced uh, view which takes you to the, 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 the old Beeple view 
where you can get information about what really happened behind the scenes. So if I were to look at the variables here, and if I look at the input, you will see that we see those MCT updates. So MCT is uh, mapping condition task, which executed. And we see the dim salesperson here. We see update dim stores here. We see dim plot here. And, and by the way, you can also see the task data as being one for all of these. And you can see success rows and all of that here. <coughs> Uh, and then you can also see the fact tables, which says that the, uh, it had 25 uh, successful rows and that task data is also one, right? You may also be interested into seeing what happened to the temp variable because that's what was driving our fact table refresh. And uh, if you see here, the status set to yes, which kind of shows that the variables were used effectively and uh, I know it all, it all worked out. So that's where I end, that's where I take a pause. And uh, I hope that you uh, now have a better understanding of task flows and uh, probably we'll see a better usage of that in the future. Thank you so much.